with you, so go to Deuteronomy 29, 29. 29th chapter of Deuteronomy, are you there? Let's look at the 29th verse. The secret things belong. You notice things there are italicized in your King James Bible? That means it was put there at the privilege of the translator. If it's put there by a translator, you can take it out. Now, and there are times that it's, that it, it's fine, but more times than not, it messes up what the, what the like in this case, it messes up what the Hebrew language was saying. But then this was translated a long time ago. The secrets belong unto the Lord our God. Now see the word belong, belongs there. But things, well, it doesn't hurt anything, but it, 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 it empowers it. The secrets belong unto the Lord our God, but those revealed belong unto us and to our children forever, that we may do all the words of this law. God has always intended for every born again child of God to understand everything he said because he intends for you and me to do everything he said so that everything he said shall come to pass. He didn't say it just to hold the pages together. And Jesus' blood was shed in behalf of it. That's the reason Jesus said only one thing is needful. If you'll get revelation from the Word of God, you can get this thing fixed. I don't care what it is. Yeah, but Brother Copeland, we're talking about a billion dollars. So? We're talking some, about somebody that, that's created multiple trillions of stars, and the Scripture says he calls them all by name. Think about that. It's big enough to understand that he created all the bugs, man. <laughs> but think about it. stars, trillions of stars. And he calls them all by name. Now, his word, revelation in this word, now here's where we're going now. Revelation is in his word. You remember. Jesus said, blessed are those that have believed and not seen. Being able to believe something you can't see with your natural eyes. Now, why did he say that? Why did he say, blessed are those? He, Thomas is the one that said, unless I can see it and feel it, you know, put my hands in his side, I will not believe. And Jesus said, Thomas, stop being faithless. Now, when you begin to believe the Word instead of what you see or feel, Amen. you had to make a decision to do that. Yes. You had to decide to do that. And when you made that decision, instantly your spirit man came to the ascendancy. Amen. Now, you maybe didn't feel any different. You sure didn't look any different. But when that happened, faith went to work. Amen. You can't judge faith by the way you feel. You judge faith by truth. Faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. The Word said that, so when you did that, it came. Amen. Amen. It came. Amen. 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 So now when that happened, Jesus said, when you did that, you put the blessing to work. Amen. The blessing of the Lord. He was made a curse for us that the blessing of Abraham's might come on the, the Gentiles. That's you and me all the rest of us, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit. What he promised Abraham belongs to us. So the moment you believed something you couldn't see with these physical eyes, faith came. 
Your spirit man took over. If you're born again, if you're not born again, you, it, it, that doesn't work. Because if you're not born again, you don't have the life in you. That's called mighty power. That's the way it's translated in Greek. We have mighty power. The weapons of our warfare are mighty Amen. through God. Now, the moment you get born again, it's in there. It's in there. So now, the moment you made the decision to receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior, it worked. And there wasn't nothing hell could do. They couldn't stop it. All he could do is come around later and tell you it didn't work. But he's a liar and the father of it. Now, here's what, here's what the Lord um, instructed me to make clear tonight. It's not wrong actually, I'm talking about in reality, believing, seeing is believing. But seeing with the natural eye and believing don't work. Because it's deception. Mm -hmm. right. Now, when you, see, that's what Thomas was doing. He said, if I can't feel it and see it, I won't believe it. Well, I mean, hey, come on. I mean, this is Peter and James, John, a whole bunch is telling this guy, and he still went, I don't believe it. And they came in there and said, we've seen him. He said, I'll tell you right now, if I can't put my finger in them holes, I'm not, I will. See, his will was involved. I will not believe. And suddenly there stood Jesus. <laughs> now, let me tell you something. That didn't bring faith. Because he saw him with his natural eye. Well, it sure make me believe. No, it wouldn't. It'd make you wonder. That's a sign and a wonder. Faith cometh by hearing the word and hearing by the Word of God. Yeah, but no, don't, yeah, but that's what the Word of God said. In fact, that's what Jesus said. Thomas quit being faithless. That's right. That's right. Mm -hmm. that's right. Amen. Amen. And then, and then he told him what to do. He said, they that have believed and not seen, they're what? Blessed. Blessed. So when you made the decision to believe it, even though you couldn't see it with your natural eye, you released the blessing of the Lord. Now, now where are you going? I, I can't feel it. I can't see it. But I believe it. The, the Word of God said it and it's mine. Right. Glory to God. That's what Jesus said. That's the end of that. Amen. That discussion's over with. Amen. Now I'm walking along and I'm, you know, I just keep saying, I don't care what I feel like. I don't, you're a liar, Satan, and the father of it. Now I'm telling you. And you come in here and you sit down there and then the Lord says something and you said, whoa, did you see that? And you saw it with your spiritual eye and you believed it. That's the reason humans instinctively know if they can see it, they can believe it. If they can believe it, they can have it. But they're stuck in the natural. And it's just like being stuck in the mud. I don't care if you've got a thousand horsepower engine. You can't get out of the mud if it's stuck. It's just doing nothing. It's just sitting there throwing away a lot of energy. Are you following me here with this? Yes. So that's where we are. Now notice this again. The secret things belong unto the Lord our God. Hey, does it come in any big surprise to you that he knows everything? No. <laughs> It may shock some of you. He's smarter than you. That's right. That's right. That dawned on me one day, and I thought, my lightning fast mind finally got this. 
He knows more than I do. That's right. It's time for me to quit arguing with him, believe what he said, and then release my faith for revelation of what he said. And the more I see it in my real eye, in my faith, the eye of my faith. <laughs> we were coming home from one of Brother Hagin's meetings one night, and John was in the back seat with Kelly, and, and, and he's just a little guy. I mean, he wasn't even in school yet. And Brother Hagin had preached on the third eye, the eye of faith. I'm not looking with these two eyes. I'm looking with the eye of faith. And we were about halfway home and John said, Daddy, ain't it great to have three eyes? <laughs> he got it. Five years old and he got it. He still got it. Amen. So, and and that's, that's what he's telling us here. God knows everything. And he's not hiding any of it from you, from me. He's hiding it from the devil. Right. It don't belong to him. It belongs to us. That's right. Amen. Amen. Did you hear what I said? Yes, sir. Who does it belong to? Us. 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 No, no, read it again. Look at, look at it. Look at it. The secret things, the mysteries. Say mysteries. The mysteries. Let me, let me, let me add this because we're going to see this in, a, in another verse here too. The mysteries of the kingdom of God belong to the Lord our God. But those mysteries of the kingdom which are revealed belong to us and to our children forever that we may do all the words of his word. All the promises, all the direction that we may do everything in His Word. And we, I mean, we may not get it for a while. It may be a year, it may be 10 years, but you stay with it and you'll get it. Glory to God. And you come across a scripture that says, Stay out of debt, don't argue about it. You say, Sir, yes, sir. That's all I needed to say. One step at a time. Now I have to commit. I can't be a wimp. No. No. What does that mean? That means I got to spiritually exercise. Yep. I got to build myself up praying in the Holy Ghost on my most holy faith. Amen. My most holy faith. You know why it's most holy faith? Because you're praying in a language you can't foul up. That's right. That's right. That's right. Can't argue with it. You can't understand it. But if you'll believe God, the scripture says when you pray in the spirit, do what? Pray that you interpret. That's not that you're going to stand up and interpret somebody's message. You need to be knowing what the Spirit of God has been bringing up on the inside of you. And you, so that as you're walking it out by faith, uh, whatever things, so ever you desire, when you pray, believe you receive them, you shall have them. Not, not as long as you can understand it. But the apostle said, I'll pray in my, with the Spirit and I'll sing with the Spirit. I'll pray with my understanding and I'll sing with my understanding. But it's, there is coming a time when this, that God, this, these secrets. In fact, one translation talking about uh, praying in tongues, one translation calls it divine secrets. Hallelujah. We're praying no secrets. They're coming out. We're talking secrets. And the devil ain't got a clue what you're saying. Well, he can't understand it in English but, but, or any other language. But you're talking things with God. And see, your inner man understands it. It's your head that don't know yet. Even your mind knows things that has not gotten through to your brain yet. This is an integrated system. So uh, <laughs> some of you need to forgive your computer <laughs> because unforgiveness is really bad on your brain. It's a proven thing. We'll talk about that some more, but it does act. The, the, the human brain was not wired for unforgiveness, fear, and doubt, unbelief, and anger, and all that. And when you engage in it, it literally causes brain damage. And the only way you can get that out of there is to, is to renew your mind. Otherwise, it ain't coming out. Anyway, that, we'll talk about that later. 
Now, and I'll give you the, the authority behind it. But when you're, <laughs> you're, you're walking in the Word, then you're talking the Word. And, and then, thank you, Father. I pray. Now, what, now, now listen to me. I'm, I'm, about to, I'm about to do a spiritual workout here. Now, Father, I'm going to pray over my meeting. And uh, uh, that, that meeting is, is my care. I, I, I care for the people. I, I, I care for the, the content of the message and the, the music, everything. Everything about it, the finances, everything about it. But you said in your word in 1 Peter 5, 6 through 10, that ca- for me to cast all of my care, not no 50% of it, all. I don't have any right to argue here. I'm a soldier in the army of the Lord. Amen. Amen. I don't argue with God. That's right. That's right. Gloria has a great line for that. Get over it. <laughs> and if she doesn't say get over it, she says get a grip. <laughs> That's strong. <laughs> I, told, I, told a bunch of, I told a bunch of military guys that, and I kept telling them what Gloria said. And finally, one of them said, I got it! Get over it! <laughs> Amen. Now, when I'm praying, sir, I cast the whole of my care over on you. And your word says in 1 Peter 5, 6 through 10, that you will exalt me in due time. You will strengthen me. You will help me. And you will establish me. Amen. I refuse to touch that care. Under any circumstance, I will not put it in my mouth. I will not touch it. I'm only touching this in the spirit. Now, in praying over that, your, your word says, he that prays in an unknown tongue edifies himself. Now, the Greek word edifies the same word that you use to charge a battery. Amen. I'm going to edify the battery. I'm edifying. What's that? Building up. Yeah. Building up. Same thing. Building up. And then I'm going to do as, as I'm, I'm doing that, and I said that out of the mouth of two words, your word also says, building myself up, or charging my spirit man, building myself up, praying on my most holy faith, praying in the Holy Spirit. Building myself up on my most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. Now, the scripture also said, when you pray in an unknown tongue, pray that you interpret. Well, Jesus said, when you pray, believe you receive. When you pray in an unknown tongue, pray that you interpret. And when you do, and believe that you're being built up. Now, don't test it with your body. But it also says, when the devil comes at you while you've cast the care, it says, uh, steadfast, steadfast, resist him. Resist him steadfastly in the faith. And after you have suffered a while. Now, don't let that word suffer throw you. It's the same word. After you have resisted him a while, he will strengthen, establish. Amen. Amen. Can you see it? Now that is the suffering of a born again believer. You're not supposed to be suffering with sickness. You're not supposed to be suffering. Now, anything Jesus bore for us on the cross, you are not supposed to be bearing it. That's not our suffering. 
what, what this is talking about is a whole lot more suffering to this than there is just having a, something wrong with your body. I don't care how terrible it is because that's temporary. Yeah. This is spiritual fight. This is spiritual warfare. Ah, but let patience or endurance have her perfect work that you might be entire wanting nothing. Why? You're getting stronger, not weaker. The more you stand, the stronger you get. The more you, the stronger you get, the more you stand. But you're going to have to take some time and you're going to have to work out. What are you doing? You're building up your spirit. Building up your spirit. You're getting stronger in the Holy Ghost. And you quit, you, you'll come to the place where you quit whining and crying around about it. Mm -hmm. You'll come to the place where you quit judging people. Mm -hmm. You come to the place where you quit arguing with God. What are, you, what, are you, what are you doing? You are truly becoming a soldier that endures hardship. And it was, thank you, sir, for allowing me to be part of this family and part of this army. Glory yes, to God. You, God. I'm so honored that you would have me yes. in the Corps. What a thrill. Glory to God. Amen. And, and some, some, one, one of your brothers and sisters have trouble and, and fall. Don't start criticizing me. Go, go get them up. 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 Amen. Amen. Hey, the fuss is over with. It's time for us to quit shooting the wounded. Yes, right. Amen. 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 Well, that's babies that do that. Growing up into Him, into all things. Now, where is that going? The supernatural life in the kingdom of God. <sighs> Glory be to God. Oh, yeah. Have you ever wondered how to receive specific direction? Trying to make decisions and living life, and especially when you're getting to the 18, it's like, what do I do? Do I go to college? Do I move out? Do I stay at home? And you're going through those motions. It's taking a step back from the situation and just looking within and just saying, do I have peace? And that's the Holy Spirit. It's the Holy Spirit guiding you and saying, like, this is what you're supposed to do. And it isn't something like, oh, I, I shook and I felt this. It's just having the peace of this is what I'm supposed to do. And I just love that element of praying in tongues because we don't always know what to do. We don't, all know, don't always know what to pray or how to pray, like Romans 8, 26 says. I don't know how to pray, but I'm just praying in tongues. Just pray in tongues until I get an answer. When you feel that feeling that you're filled with it, you'll know. You will definitely know. You sit back and you're just like, wow, like this is him. This is not something that, you know, no one could have planned but him. So he sends us the Holy Spirit. And so we get that in filling with the Spirit when we're saved. It's just the evidence of speaking in tongues, the gift, is something you, you believe in faith for, and you, you ask for it and you receive it. And a lot of people are skeptical because they don't understand the language. But if you think about it, if you don't understand, like I'm married into a Hispanic family, well, I don't really know their language very well, but the more I'm around them, the more I'm listening to them, the more I'm spending time with them, I'm understanding it and I'm learning it. And it's the same, I think, with the Holy Spirit. The more you're in the Word, the more you're reading it, the more you're spending time with the Lord, the more you're understanding the Holy Spirit. I like to run a lot. And when I run every day, it builds me up. It builds my muscles up each and every day. And the more I run, the stronger I get. In the same way, praying in the Holy Ghost, it builds up your most holy faith. It builds up that spirit man to be stronger and stronger. So no matter what would try to come against you, you're going to be a, you're going to be strong for the Lord. And I would encourage everyone every day because I can tell the times when I didn't, I wasn't as strong. But you know, Jude says, "Build yourself up on your most holy faith." You know, it strengthens you on the inside. And I just want to summarize, encourage you. If nothing else, it builds you up on your most holy faith. It keeps you in the love of God. You know, interacting and working with people, there are always opportunities to walk out of the love of God. 
And one of the things that I've constantly gone back to was that place in me where I prayed in tongues. I start praying in tongues, and true enough, it kind of diffuses all of the, you know, the things that would make you want to react rather than act. So. What if you had someone who could help you make the right decision, pick good relationships, and choose the right road? You do. Get to know the Him in the Holy Spirit in You package, which includes the teaching series and study guide, The Holy Spirit by Kenneth Copeland, and the mini book, God's Will is the Holy Spirit by Gloria Copeland. The Holy Spirit teaching series and study guide by Kenneth Copeland is a great foundational resource for every believer. Get back to the basics. See how God gave you the Holy Spirit to be your comforter, teacher, counselor, and friend. Be directed by Him. Walk in His supernatural power every day and into the destiny God has for you. God's Will is the Holy Spirit, a mini book by Gloria Copeland, shares the scriptures about the Holy Spirit. God has provided for you to be successful in life. Receive the answers you need, the direction you're looking for, and the power to walk daily in the Holy Spirit. Develop a deeper relationship with the Holy Spirit Order the Holy Spirit and You package on CD with accompanying study guide, and you'll also receive Gloria Copeland's book, God's Will is the Holy Spirit. Order today for only $29.99, a savings of 20%. Visit kcm.org slash TV special and request your package today. Be guided from the inside into the destiny God has for you. We release our faith for the greatest Southwest Believers Convention in history. We will never accomplish apart what we could accomplish together. Not even close. This conference is going to be the best conference you've ever had in your life. The 2015 Southwest Believers Convention at the Fort Worth Convention Center, June 29th through July 4th in Fort Worth, Texas. One word from God can change your life forever. Build your faith and be transformed by the Word of God. The Believer's Voice of Victory is available on DVD or CD at kcm.org. Continue your studies with this week's product offer. Order your copy today and let these word-based teachings help you live in victory.